Hi. Uh, thank you for stopping by the ARC today. And uh, I just want to take care of a few housekeeping things before we get started. And um, I, I would ask that if perchance something you hear or you see adds value to you, please hit the subscribe button. And that way you can be notified when we post uh, anything, whatever we might post. All right. So um, that sticks into my housekeeping for the day. So let's see if we can't get into this. Let's say a quick prayer. Father God, in your name, Jesus, we come before you this day and we thank you. We thank you for your goodness, for your mercy. We thank you for your keeping power. We ask now that you sit self back, that you only allow the light of your word to shine through. Father, let us not interject anything that is not from you. We surrender ourselves to you. Prepare the hearts to receive that which you prepared for them, Father. And let, let it uh, change lives, set somebody free. Uh, just uplift a heart in, in any way. Uh, and we'll give your name glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, we praise. Pray. Amen. So let's see if we can't get into this. The message for today comes out of uh, the book of Genesis, uh, the 41st chapter, starting at the 9th verse and concluding at the 14th verse. I will be reading from Young's Literal Translation, and it reads, And the chief of the butler speaks with Pharaoh, saying, My sin I mentioned this day. Pharaoh has been wroth against his servants, and giveth me into the charge uh, in the house of the chief of the executioners, uh, me and the chief of the bakers. Um, and we dreamed a dream in one night, I and he, each according to the interpretation of his dreams, we have dreamed. Uh, and there is with us a youth, a Hebrew, a servant of the chief of the executioners. And we recount to him and he interprets to us our dreams. Uh, to each according to his dream has he interpreted. Uh, and, and it comes to pass as he has interpreted. Uh, to us, so it has been. Me he put back on my station and him he hanged. And Pharaoh sins and calls Joseph. And they cause him to run out of the pit and he shaves and he changes his garments and he comes in unto Pharaoh. All right. He changes his garments and he comes in unto Pharaoh. All right, let's get into this. We have been lied to. Bamboozled misled and misguided. We've been told from childhood up that it only takes a moment to change one's circumstance. That, that uh, it, it takes a kiss to awaken a princess. It takes a kiss and a frog can become a prince. To become a hero, you simply need to jump into a phone booth, rip off your clothes, and you become a Superman. It's a lie. A lie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've watched over and over again how people change their circumstance within two hours. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You, become, you can become fast and furious in two hours. Yeah, yeah, you can take on a Jurassic beast and win within two hours. You can tackle a mission that's impossible, not hard, impossible, and overcome it in two hours. And it's my belief that after seeing uh, uh, so many fast results that they've planted seeds in our psyche that pushes us into unrealistic and unreasonable expectations. Yeah, 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 unreasonable expectations. Uh, why else will you tell God how long you've been praying on a thing? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Why else would your expectation be that God should move on your schedule? 
Uh, you've got to understand that the woman who was loose was bound for 18 years. The woman with the issue of blood, yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh. She had issues for 12 years. Uh, understand that the man who received his sight was blind from childhood to adulthood. And here we find Joseph. He had two dreams. One said that his 11 brothers would bow down to him. The other said that the sun and the moon, his father and his mother, and the 11 stars, his brothers, would bow down to him. And the next thing that happens is he finds himself in a pit. Then he finds himself uh, sold into slavery. Then he's a servant at Potiphar's house. Then he's accused of rape. Then he's thrown in prison, and then he's forgotten. Some commentators say that from the time he was uh, 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 thrown in the pit and to the prison was 11 years. But the scriptures then tell us that he was forgotten for two additional years after he interpreted the butler and the baker's dreams. To, that's 13 years. Yeah, but, 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 but don't worry. Because I've come to encourage you today. You might be going through something. I know we're having this whole pandemic thing. I know we're on lockdown. I know all kinds of things are happening in our world at this time. And it looks like there's no hope. There's no chance. And it's all a surprise to us. But I want you to understand that my subject for today, which is, this is not a surprise. It's a plan. Now, let me break this down. There's three reasons I know that this is not a surprise, it's a plan. And the first reason is because God knows you. Uh, don't you find it strange that Joseph not only interpreted dreams, but he also interpreted time. Uh, he, 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 he told the, 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 the butler that uh, uh, the three vines meant three days and you'd be restored to your office. He told the baker that the three baskets meant the three days and you would be uh, hanged. He told Pharaoh that the seven fat cows were seven years of prosperity and that the seven thin cows were seven years of famine that the seven plush grain were seven years of prosperity and that the seven uh, uh, drought-stricken grains were seven years of famine. However, God didn't reveal to him the time frames of his dreams. Now, he knew it was going to happen, and you know how I know he knew that? Because he told Pharaoh that when God repeats a dream, that means it's established and that he's hastening to perform it. So he knew it was going to happen. But God didn't give him a time frame. That's right. Read it in verse 32. That's when he tells him, if God repeats it, then it's established and he's going to hasten to do it. God repeated his dream twice. Joseph's dream was repeated twice, but yet he wasn't given a time frame. Here you have Joseph, 13 years going through his ordeal, holding on to a promise and not clear as to what's going on. Why wouldn't he tell him? Better yet, why won't he tell you when your deliverance will come? Simple because he knows you. He did it to the children of Israel. Look at it in Exodus, uh, the 13th chapter and the 17th verse. He said that he took them the long way around because he was concerned knowing them that they would be afraid at the prospect of war with the Philistines and return back to Egypt. He knew them. So he took them the long way around. He did it to David. Uh, do you think David knew when he was facing the lion and the bear it was because of Goliath? No. He didn't know that. 
Do you think he knew that when he killed Goliath, it was to raise his notoriety amongst the people that he was going to lead? No, he didn't know that. And after he was anointed to be king and he was serving under Saul at the table of Saul and Saul was slinging spears at his head. Do you think he sat there and said, but hold it, wait a minute, I'm the king. No, David ran because David was like, he is going to kill me. I I know you anointed me king, but when is it going to happen? You ain't tell me. And this man is throwing spears at my head. And now God's doing it to you. Why? He promised you deliverance. He promised you victory. He ain't tell you when it's going to move, but he promised you. And why? Why wouldn't he tell you again? because he knows you. Don't you understand that, that some things are on a need to know basis and you don't need to know. He knows your fears. He knows your hurts. He knows your pains. He knows your insecurities. He knows you. You don't believe me. You don't believe me. I'm gonna prove it. I'm gonna prove it. Simple. Jeremiah, the first chapter, five, through 10, he says, before I formed thee in the belly, I have known thee. And before thou comest forth from the womb, I have separated thee, a prophet to the nations. I have made thee. And I say, ah, Lord Jehovah, lo, I have not known to speak for I am a youth. And Jehovah, now get this, and Jehovah says to him, do not say I am a youth. Hold on, homie. Don't tell me what you can do and what you can't do. I know you. And he goes further and he says, all that I command thee, you speak it. Be not afraid of their faces for with thee am I to deliver you. An affirmation from Jehovah. And Jehovah put his hand and strikes against my mouth. And Jehovah said to me, lo, I have put my words in your mouth. Don't you understand that sometimes when you get hit, it's because God is putting something in you? Come on now. Some of that beating is to instill something in you. He goes further. He says, I see, I have charged you this day concerning the nations and concerning the kingdoms to pluck up and to break down, to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. There's a job I got for you. There's some things I need to put in you. And this is not a microwave operation. This is something that takes time. This is something that takes some building in you. This is something that takes some strengthening in you. This is something that I need to do because I know you. There is no bodybuilding in the world, bodybuilder in the world that goes to lift a weight, but hasn't built up from light weights to heavier weights to a point where they can now lift the heaviest weight that they can lift. Why? Because it's a process. There's a plan. And God knows you. He knows what you can take and what you can't take. And so he takes you along a path so that he can instill things in you. And he says, don't tell me what you can't handle. Don't do it. I'm God. And before you were formed, I knew you. Before you came out of the womb, I knew you. I am God and I know you. The next reason that I know this is not a surprise, but a plan is because God knows your time. You, you, see, you, you need to be clear about this. God knows your time, you see. He knows your time of release. He knows your time of victory. God knows uh, your time. Isn't it interesting how the Bible gives you information that's never outdated? Never. Like in Jeremiah, the 29th chapter and the 11th verse, when he says, I, for I have known the thoughts that I am thinking towards you, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give 
to you posterity and hope. The King James Version says, to bring you to an expected end. God knows your time. What's interesting about this scripture, this, this verse, is the time that it was taking place. Yeah, yeah, Israel was in captivity. Yeah, yeah, they were on lockdown. They were shut down. And the whole time there were other prophets, other false prophets, trying to tell them, no, no, you ain't got to stay in. You ain't got to stay home. Come on, come on, everything's all right. God said so. No, no, don't worry about this. Don't worry about this. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can come out. Everything's the same. You, you're fine. We, you can go back to normal. Yeah, does that sound familiar? False prophets telling them, don't settle for this. Fight this. God said it's okay. Fight this. Don't settle. He said he's going to bring uh, 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 the vessels from the temple back to Jerusalem. You ain't got to stay in Babylon. Come on, fight, 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 fight. Come on. And Jeremiah, the lone prophet standing against the false prophet saying, stay where you are. Stay at home. Build houses. Expand your family. God is going to keep you in this circumstances. I know you're in captivity right now. I know it's an uncomfortable situation, but stay where you are. God said he will preserve you if you stay where you are. Look, you got to grab hold to this. Don't let anybody or anything take this from you. I'm going to say it again. I'm going to run it and run it and run it and run it till it gets in you. Don't let anyone take it from you. This is not a surprise. Now, it was a surprise to you, but this is not a surprise. It's a plan. The third reason I know that this is a plan is because God knows your victory. He knows your victory. And I'm almost finished. I, you got the first two. He knows you. He knows your time. And now I'm telling you, he knows your victory. Look, understand. There was someone that God did reveal his plans to. And that was Jesus. And think about this. Jesus, knowing what the father wanted, turned to the father and said, if you could let this cup pass by me, but he was able to come back and say, but nevertheless, not my will, but your will. But he asked them twice, can you let this cup pass by me? And that was Jesus. What would happen if God revealed his plan to you? I'm telling you, God knows your victory. You got Joseph now coming to the end of his journey and getting ready to walk into his victory. In the verse uh, 13 and 14, Verse, verse 14 in particular, and Pharaoh sends and calls Joseph and they get him to run out of the pit. He shaves, he changes his clothes, and then he stands before Pharaoh. And now we find Joseph now at the end, starting where it began. His brothers bowing down to him his family bound down to him, him elevated to a place of authority, so high in the kingdom that everything had to go through him if it was going to happen. Second only to Pharaoh. Now think about this, from the prison to being second only to Pharaoh. Come on now, tell me God don't know your victory. And God to encourage you, leaves you little tidbits for you to feed on and strengthen yourself. Why else in Romans, the eighth chapter and the 28th verse, would he say, and we know that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and who are called according to his purpose. 
is a tidbit to strengthen you. In Matthew 7 and 11, he said, If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him? I'm telling you, he knows your victory. He's giving you little tidbits to strengthen you, to keep you, to hold you, to anchor you in the midst of the turmoil. Be clear. He does not say, I'm going to break down my plan to you. He says it's for your good. He doesn't say I'm breaking down my timing to you. He says it's for your good. He just told you it's all to bring you to an expected end. Understand how thorough his plan is. In Luke, he tells you even the very hairs on your head are numbered. That's all part of the plan. It's all part of, if he's given that much consideration to the plan, how can you not trust him? My God, my God, how can you not trust him? When you understand that it's because of his mercies that you're not consumed, it's part of the plan. That his compassions are renewed every morning, it's part of the plan to bring you to an expected end. Great is his faithfulness to us. Great is his faithfulness to us. And why? Because this is not a surprise. It's a plan. Be patient. It will all be over soon. Be patient. Things will open out, up and work out for your good. Be patient. Trust God. Know that he knows you. Know that he knows your time. And know that he knows your victory. And more than all of that, know that this is not a surprise. But this is his plan. God keep you. God bless you. And again, if there's something you heard today that has added value to you, please hit the subscribe button and you can be notified whenever we post something else. All right, God bless you, God keep you, stay safe. We pray for every family that has lost a loved one. We pray for peace. We pray for calm. We pray for victory. In Jesus' name, amen.